Welcome back, everybody, to the continuation of our Let's Play of Space Exploration and Cross Destroyer 2. Sorry about the missing episode on Saturday. I had a bit of a kebab incident on Wednesday evening. <laughs> My favorite kebab place, I think, either closed or they went on holiday. Not quite sure what happened yet. And I had to find myself a new kebab place. And if you're from Germany and you know your way around kebabs, you do know that it's pretty much hit or miss with kebab places. Either you find a kebab place that's absolutely amazing for you, or you find a kebab place that absolutely wrecks you. <laughs> I found a lot of one. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm fine. I'm fine. Perfectly fine. Let's continue our bloody amazing game over here of Factorio and Crossorio 2 and Space Exploration. Yep, that's also in there. And let's have a look at what we need to do. Now, uh, at some point in time, I did make, and I think I made this off camera, off camera, I made this uranium process over here. This is just basic uranium ore going in, getting refined into uranium-238 and uranium-235 and as well as iron and stone and i just supersized this we used to have a, ura a uranium mine over here but that thing kind of kind of got emptied out and uranium on the map is also contested to say the least now i do know that we have on byra a whole bunch of uranium available for us what the hell is going on over here why is there this many space capsules in here um i guess it's fine but still um something feels a bit off <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, one at a time. One step at a time. Um, yes, we we are going to go to Byra, but not this episode. We're going to do that probably next episode or something like that. This episode, we are going to focus a little bit on something else. Now, we did put down the Iridium plate machine over here, and the Iridium plate machine over here has made a whole bunch of Iridium plates. We are good for Iridium plate. This machine over here is working like a charm. Um, I don't think we need to do anything over here. This over here is working as expected. Then, off camera as well, I did put down another copper refining place over here. Mostly because we are eating up quite a lot of circuits. I also vastly expanded uh, the circuit production in uh, our Robo Mall over here. Because we do need a whole bunch of circuits. And I think we might have to increase our stone plate production. But for now, this is fine. Now, of course... At some point in time, we're going to start moving stuff out of the mall. And the moment we are going to start moving stuff out of the mall is going to be when we get the advanced assembly machines. That's the moment when we're going to start moving stuff out. Uh, and those are not too far away, as you can see. It's only uh, Material Science Pack 1, Material Science Pack 2, and then we are here already. So uh, once we have these over here, these are the big uh, assembly machines, the very, very big assembly machines with a crafting speed of 5. And I think up to five or maybe six slots for modules. I think it's six, actually. Uh, which means we can make faster machines, bigger machines, with more productivity bonus. That's pretty much the point in time where we want to start um, pu pulling stuff out of the mall from over here. Good. In the meantime, uh, at some point in time, we did start crushing Holmium over here. So we can start to take a look at the Holmium process. And let's go over to our crafting spot over here, or our building spot over here, and let's set up Holmium Processing. Good! It is kind of similar to Iridium Processing, but it's also kind of different. Uh, we're just going to go through it step by step. And I think the first step, I think, is a chemical plant. Uh, let's have a look. Mm, Holmium, yes, Holmium Chloride. That's the first step we have to do. Then, after we get the Holmium Chloride, we, I think, put it into a furnace? Maybe? No, there's this step of between. I remember, I remember. We put it into a centrifuge over here. And then we turn that into homium powder. The, the process kind of feels a bit like the Iridium process. I think it's the same machines at the beginning. And I think even the same machines at the end. Uh, only the middle part is a bit different. Yeah, this is also chemical plants into centrifuges. Uh, maybe we can make the same. Maybe not. We will see. But after that, we definitely do get a step with the furnace where we then turn the homium into molten homium. We could also turn it into homium ingots straight away. Um, but this over here, let's just, let's compare these two. I'm pretty sure that this one is better, but let's compare them either way. This one over here takes in coal, takes in sand, a lot of coal, and makes 100 homium powder. Oh, no, we, we need 100 homium powder to make one ingot. This one over here takes in 50 powder to make 250 molten homium, and then the molten homium, we can turn that into how much should we get 
We need 50 for 250 and we need 250 for one. So that's basically twice as good. <laughs> it's basically twice as good. We're definitely going to do this one. Then, very important, um, speed and prod. Yep. Speed and prod. Yep. Speed and prod. And only speed. Yes, perfect. So let's figure out what we can do over here. Now, step number one. Uh, let's have a look at this recipe over here. Mm, oh, boy. This is horrible. <laughs> Um, so we put in two crushed hominides and we get out two times 25, uh, 0.25 or yeah, 0 0.5 homium chloride. That is what we get out either way. So we get 0 0.5 homium chloride out over here per two seconds. So we actually get a quarter homium chloride over here per second. This machine over here, oh boy, <laughs> you want five of them per second. Um, yes, and you make a quarter per second. Yes. Wow, that is terrible. That is terrible. Um, don't do that, please. Um, I mean, I was maybe thinking of maybe being able to do something like this. Uh, one, two, three, and then we just... But that will not be the case. I mean... Is it really a quarter? Let me check again. <laughs> Just to be sure. Um, yeah, it is 0 0.25 per second. So eight of these make four. You need five. Um, almost, almost. But this will not be the solution. If we could manage to get more machines around this machine, um, we will not. We could, of course... Just roll of it and go like, hey, sure, let's go like this. But you know what? No, 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 no. I guess we're going to make some some more dedicated machines. Um, Yeah, let's copy over you. That didn't do shit. There we go. Uh, and then one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then we're going to take ourselves a beacon. Put the beacon in the middle. There we go. And then we, we know this one. We know this one. Mm, how about we do it over here and over there? And then put one of these in the middle. There we go. Good. Now it is. Um. Well, this makes one per second. This makes two per second. We need five per second. So if we want to do this, we're going to need something more like this. There we go. That makes five per second all going into this machine at the end. We could even do it like this on the end. Yeah. Um, can we can we insert into a loader? I guess we can. We will have to try this one out, but I'm pretty sure we can insert into a loader. There we go. And actually, you can just keep these red ones. It it doesn't it really doesn't matter. There we go. There we go. And then at least this machine over here is also part of this beacon over here. Now, of course, um, there will be productivity modules in here, and there will be speed modules in here as well. Um, the speed modules will make everything, well, they will still be at the same clock speed, so that will be fine. The productivity bonus, however, will be a quarter more. And now to think about that, you know what we just could do? We could just cut this part. Um, since we make a quarter more, uh, this will be exactly enough to compensate. I mean, there were these over here. So this is 10. 8 plus 25% more is 10 as well. So we can just cut these machines and we're going to be fine. Good. Of course, later on we get better productivity modules. Um, then we will not be able to, to gain more speed out of this. But we will start to use less resources. And using less resources, I think, is also a very good thing uh, to keep in mind. Good. Man. Um, make sure that we have the pipes over here. Also, I think I'm... I might sound like I'm getting a cold. Um, I can hear it in my microphone that I have like this this high-pitched nasal sound. It, it kind of feels like. And I did buckle today and I finally did turn on my heater because, well, it's it's getting cold outside. It's it's like 8 degrees outside Celsius. And I think it's about time that, that I turn on the heater. Now, we do have one problem over here. Uh, we do have a loop of the crushed hobonite and we have a loop of the anion iron exchange beads so oh and we can't filter these can we 
No. Okay, this is horrible. <laughs> we can't do it like this. This looks really nice and clean on the outside, but in practice, nope. These inserts over here, they don't care about what we put out. Uh, we could just put in some, some filter inserters and maybe put some belt down like this. That would work. Mm, then we can filter out this. And these two over here, they, they will be fine. Uh. <laughs> mm. I'm pretty sure that this will not work. However, something like this will work. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that could work. But then we do have the issue. We have, we've got a couple of issues over here, like, like a whole bunch of them. Uh, and the biggest one, of course, is the loop. Mm. Now, usually we put in... Yeah, what we usually do is we have something like this, something like this, and then we just put in one of these over here, and we use this for the loop. But this will not work over here. This will definitely not work over here. We got a double loop we have to take care of. We could... Now, we don't have the inputs for it. We just don't have the inputs for it, unless... No, then we still don't have the input for it. <laughs> Unless. We might have the inputs for it. Oh, God, this is going to be horrible. Uh, I had to think for a second there. Let's try something like this. Uh, we are going to have... I guess a loader input. Or a loader output. I guess a loader output. This is going to be so unbalanced. <laughs> uh, load output puts everything on the same belt and then it just goes out and this over here is already not working um, yeah let's give it some more space then we got a single input belt going like this two inputs yeah we're gonna need two inputs at least Unless we use a loader for this as well. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm <laughs> thinking about stuff. Uh, we could do this. We could do that. You go down. You go down. Copy this over over here. And then we just continue on and on and on and on and on and on. That will be fine. Oh, but this will get so uber stuck. <laughs> I can already smell how this thing can get stuck. Um, and it will be even worse over here. No, 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 we only got two inputs, do we? Let's check. Yeah, we only got two inputs. So, if we do it like this, this will be easier. Uh, we then just filter out over here, for example, the iron exchange beads, if I can find them. Um, I could, of course, just press Control F. I do know that. But I kind of like to, to try and find things like this. Um, wait, wait, the fuck are they? Um, are they over here? Oh, they are over here. There we go. And you over there, you do... The crushed hominoids. There we go. And then we take one of these, one of those. Uh, input and output priority. There we go. Do the same thing over there, but do it on the other side. There we go. Not like that, please. Mm, good. This is definitely something we do know that is working. And then, yeah, copy over this as well. Good. The filters are set. We don't need to, to worry about that. Good. And then even liquids can be super duper easy. Mm, but now we need to think about how we can stack these. I mean, we do kind of want to use beacons as much as we can. And stacking these is going to be troublesome, to say the least. What we could do is something like this. This would make them um, stackable. At least then we have something like this going on. 
And then if we go come around with the beacon, well, we could do something like this. And then, well, flip them around. Oh, we have got some space. Wait a minute. Um, yeah, place them over here. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. And these beacons down here, of course, they don't exist. Not really the best beacon retention, to be perfectly honest, but kind of works. It kind of works. And then how many of these do we need? We need another block of these. Here we go. And then that will be the first block. Sure. I mean, why not? And then we just connect this thing over here. We connect this thing over there. A whole bunch of undergrounds. That's fine. And then we connect a view over there. And we connect a view over there. And then I realized that, you know what we forgot? <laughs> we forgot the output. Oh, boy. Um, output, you say? Hmm. Hmm. Do we have something like an extra long insert over here? No, we don't. Uh, also, the output has to be done with a loader. Yeah, this over here. Also terrible. Um, let's let's cut about. Let's go back to this. And let's make a minimal example like this. Uh, we could, I think. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of space. We got a whole bunch of space. Let's pull these about a little bit more. And actually do it like this. And now we can work with it. It will be bigger. That's fine. But now we can at least think about where we will be putting our output. And that's going to be pretty straightforward now. Also, could we not have done this over here? No, we could have not. But we can definitely sneak this together like this. Uh, and then we do the same thing over there. Same thing over there. And then we're going to have one of these going like this and one of these going like this. And now we can squish it back together. We take this thing over there and we just squish it as far as we can like this. And then we put this thing in the middle. And uh, now it's a little bit off. Yeah, do it like this. <laughs> Now it looks nice and symmetrical. <laughs> I mean, you have to look at this thing. And, I mean, if things are not nice looking, then why even build it? There we go. There we go. There we go. And then we connect up this and that and this and that and this and that. And then suddenly we now have a build. Now, one thing we do need to do over here is make sure that you over there only push out the holmium chloride. There we go. Let me just update these real quick. There we go. There we go. Good. Sure. That works. And then we're going to need eight of these. Mm, you can do it like this. And then one, two. And then. Yeah, here's fine. This looks nice and symmetrical. And then at the end of this thing, let's close down this. Close down this. We don't need you. We don't need you. What we do need is you and you. Can we? No. This will be its own little beacon machine or beacon machine over here. Uh, but at the end of this machine, we do get you. Let's place you all the way over here. And then it will just be input, input, and then we're done over here. Good. Now, uh, we do need something else for the center future over here. We do need copper cable. How much copper cable do we need? One. <laughs> <laughs> we need one. That's not a lot of copper cable. I guess we're going to make a copper cable making machine uh, on the outskirts of this thing. Um, but what we could do is wing it like this. Does almost. We, we If we wing it like this, we can wing it like this. But if we want to do this, oh, that's going to be horrible. Um, copy paste it over. Get all the machines out. Rotate, and then flip. And I think this will work. Yeah, because now all the pipes match up. And we can have one big pipe going through the middle. One of the chlorine gas and of the homonite water. 
There we go. There we go. Good. And these now connect up. Perfect. And then we take you and you. Excellent. So now we've got a winged structure or a butterfly, as I like to call it. Uh, we could double this one down. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, we're now definitely making a whole bunch of chromium powder over here. How much chromium powder are we making? Well, each one of these does make 10 per second. Hmm. Okay. That's good. And how much do we need over here? We need 50 every 75. Keep in mind, this machine over here has a crafting speed of 4, and it will scale accordingly. So we need 200 every, every 75. That is about 2.5-ish. 2.25, actually, to be exact. Wait, how much? 200 per 75. That is, no, 2.666. 2.666 per second. And one of these over here makes 5 per second. So one of these goes into two of these. Um, okay. Was not expecting that. Mm. I mean, it will be something like this, something like that. And then we don't have space unless... Ooh. That could work. Sure, we do have the space. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a pipe nightmare. Um, let's actually rotate this around and rotate this around. There we go. Good. Yeah, that could work. And then you go to there. Uh, what happened over here? Oh, nothing happened over here. I just placed these too high. And then you go from there, you go from there, and you go from there. Good, good, good. Uh, the copper can go in on this side and on this side. We can just pull down like a belt like this. That will be the copper belt. And then this over here will be the other copper belt. There we go. That could work. And then we get liquid output. Do we need anything else over here in making this? We only need the homium powder and the pyroflux. And then we can cast it wherever we want to. Now we're in the liquid level. So now we could just make a, a cheeky pipe over here and just push it out. How much liquid do we make? We make about 250 every 75. We actually make 1,000 every 75. Um, that is about 10... That's eh, not a lot of liquid. It's, it's not a lot of liquid per second. Um, we can easily move that around. Now, of course, this machine over here with productivity bonuses will at some point outpace this machine. Um, that will be fine. It will just mean that we will need less resources to keep these over here working. I think this will be fine. This looks like a good, solid block to make homium. Um... Good. So, what do we need over here? Well, I guess we're going to go with one pipe in the middle over here for um, our power flux. And... Hmm. And then we just need to figure out... It's, it's, it's not really a hard problem. It's, it's just... It's, it's going to not be a symmetrical problem. <laughs> unless... Unless... We do the following. Um, there we go. It's, it's not doing, this is going to make it worse, isn't it? It's just going to make it worse. You know what? Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> quite literally. You know what we're just going to do? Um, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. And then we just do something like this. And then we're going to have one pipe over there. And one pipe over there. And there we go. Good. All of this over there can get yeeted. And then the only thing we need to do over here is make multiples of these. And we can just do this like this. Now, the question is, how much of these do we want? Um, before we start expanding, we also probably should put down the power poles for there as well, and the lamps and everything else. Before we start expanding, let's have a quick look at this thing over here. So you over there, you make a thousand every 75. That means you make about, uh, what is that? 13.3 per second. Just to make sure, let me just whip out the old calculator. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's 13. Uh, 0.3 to 2 per second. That's not how you do that. A uh, 1,000 divided by 75. Yeah, 13.333. Just to make sure. Then, this over here does require 10 per second. Straight up, 10 per second. So, one of these feeds up um, one of these and then a third more. So, four of these. 
Feed up four. Four of these, feed up five of these. No, wait, shit. No, they don't. <laughs> five in a bit. Three of these, feed up five. Um, four of these, feed up... No, three of these, feed up four. Four of these, feed up five and a third. So, if we want to make it even, Steven, we're going to have to make down three of these more, and then it's five, ten, fifteen, sixteen. We will have sixteen of these at the end. Running at whatever speed they need to run. Good. Which means we make 16 ingots per 25. Sure. Um, That is not a lot of ingots per second. And then, of course, we need the final step. The final step is this machine over here. Uh, which then turns that into holmium plates. And you need one every 0.25. Uh, every 2.5 seconds. Um, so that is going to be 0 0.4. So that will be 1.2 of these. And then we're going to be making... Actually, there will be one of these because his crafting speed will be greater. That's not a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of machines for not a lot of output. Did I miscalculate over here? Let's have a quick recalculation over here. I probably miscalculated over here. Um, yeah, we're going to have 16 of these. No, we, I did not miscalculate. We're going to have 16 of these. And 16 of these make less than one ingot per second. That can be consumed over here in one of these if we give them speed modules. And... Yeah. Do we need to make this bigger? <laughs> Maybe. We will see. We will see. Good. So, let's put down a quick power polling over here. Um... And I can already see that we probably want to put the power poles like this to make a nice wing out of it. And not only that, the other thing we can do over here is we can take our lamps and put the lamps over here on the other side. There we go. Now, we do need to do something about the homium water. And we do need to plan a little bit more about things like the hydrochloric acid and stuff like that. Let's have a quick peek at that. That's over there. We don't really need a lot. <laughs> we need two per second. Um, and we got like 60 machines over here. That is 32 per second. At some point in time, they will be going at crafting speed um, 4 or 2. So there will be 64 per second. 64 per second. That is if we place another one of these down. And we make... Actually, that will be quite a bit now that I think about it. Because this one over here only makes 10 per second. 20 per second if we give them speed modules. Um, So we're going to need about three. Actually, four of these per block. That's a lot of hydrochloric acid. That's also a whole bunch of stone we need to eat over here. Um, and a whole bunch of... Ooh. Remember, uh, we have that over here somewhere. Where is it? There we go. Uh, wait, we have it better. I think we have it better. Don't we also need it over here? Yeah, we need it over here as well. We're going to need the whole block of this again. I mean, we can just copy over this. This is fine. Uh, but this is only like 10 machines. What is that? That is 12 machines. And we need about 4 machines per, per block. So 8 machines in total. Actually, 7. If we put down 3 of these back to back... That will be 21 of these. That's going to be quite a big build. But then again, we don't really care. We can just reuse this uh, for the hydrochloric acid that we need over here. Uh, and stick that together. And then the other thing we need to do. There's one more step. We're kind of forgetting and neglecting. And that is the making of the ion exchange pulse over here. But this over here is a one-to-one -one copy of this. <laughs> it's the same. The only difference is we need uh, cryonite rods over here instead of um, power flux, but that is fine. That is fine. Good. So I'm going to be sketching out this a bit. Uh, maybe even put it down right away. Um, yeah, let's let's maybe set it up so that we can start it up next time. If you do like what you see, please do leave a like, a follow, a comment, a subscription. Every one of those things and actions will help me out in growing this channel to something bloody amazing. You can also find me on twitch.tv slash boltviking where we do a whole bunch more Factorio. Currently do Pyrandons over there, Rimworld and XCOM 2. And without further ado, I wish you all an amazing evening and until next time, see you around!